How's it going everyone? My name's Ross and uh, I wanted to make a video during Mental Health Awareness Week uh, to talk about my and share some of my, my battles with depression, low self-esteem and anxiety, uh, mental health problems that some I've had as far back as I can remember. Um, my battles with depression are what really brought everything to the forefront and while I was in some of my darkest days I remember watching videos similar to this of normal people just like me that were going through what I was going through or had been through what I'd been through and defeated their mental health problems and I thought geez these, these people are just normal folk just like me and um, if they can do it maybe I can do it as well um, and hopefully this can maybe even help one person out there um, even one percent it'll be worth it so I thought I'd just share some of my experiences and what I was going through and some of the thoughts I had at the time and um, where I am now and you know how completely different I am compared to what I was back then um, I'll, I'll start with my battle with depression because that's where everything came to the forefront. Um, it was in about 2012 and I was working for a, a really great massive global company. I was doing really well, performing well. My performance at work declined massively. It was my, my manager at the time and now my dear, dear friend uh, who noticed the symptoms of depression and at the time nobody was talking about it it wasn't something that anyone was there was no mental health awareness week there was no hashtags there was no nobody no celebrities were coming out and talking about it so when he said that I might have a, a, a depression I thought what depression I mean what have I got to be depressed about you know I've, I've had a fantastic upbringing I'm very close to my family my friends why should I be depressed and it wasn't until he encouraged me to go and see a psychiatrist which I did and that was really what transformed everything for me was just getting my feelings out there and understanding that this was an illness it, it, it's not me like that I'd, I'd thought of my battles my issues with anxiety and low self-esteem you know that's just how I was um it wasn't until we started a process called CBT cognitive behavioral therapy that I really noticed a transformation where you give out all your problems and if you've gone through or been through mental health problems you'll probably heard of this term but talking about how you're feeling, what your thoughts are and alternative ways of thinking about them um, that are more realistic. And I've actually got some of my thought records here, some of that I've never shared these with anybody. If if I was give, ever given anybody any advice about mental health, it would be to, to talk to people, your friends, family, the people closest to you, people are so understanding and they want to help. Um, but these thought records I never shared with anybody. I did speak to my family, my friends and it was the best thing I ever done. I, I was, it was like a weight off my shoulder when I started speaking to people about it. Um, but I never shared these thought records. I was almost embarrassed about them. Uh, but I wanted to put these in the video. I wanted to share some of them with, with people in the video. And just so you can, you know, you might resonate. You might be going through something similar. You might have similar thoughts and feelings. And these battles with anxiety and low self-esteem have been as far, these thoughts have been as far as I can remember. And I, I never gave myself any credit for anything. You know, it was... I was never good enough for anybody. I'm coming up for 36 now and I've never been in a serious relationship with anybody, with any with any partner. And I'm fine with that today. It doesn't, honestly, it doesn't bother me in the slightest, but I put so much pressure on myself historically to get into a relationship and compared myself to others that it just it drove me up the wall. I didn't have any confidence in myself. I thought I was worthless. I didn't, I didn't see myself as good enough for anybody. You know, the, the girls that I would see on nights out and stuff and, you know, Back when I was in high school and everything in college, I said, like, why would they ever want to go for somebody like me? <laughs> you know, I was, I was so hard on myself. <sighs> I was so hard on myself, like, stupidly. I... <sighs> Sorry, I'm trying to make this video as happy as I can, but... I mean, I, I didn't give myself any credit for anything. I was so hard on myself for everything I'd done. Um, and looking back on it now, so stupid. Like, it was so, so wholly inaccurate. Like, the stuff that was going through my head, it's just, it was completely inaccurate. But at the time, it felt, it felt like, uh, <sighs> felt like the, the truth. Like, this is, this is how things were. Um, and uh, sorry, um, okay. Um, I felt like that was that was accurate. That was the truth, you know. Why why would why would girls want to go out with me? And 
you know, why would my friends want to hang about with me? Why are people inviting me to things? You know, they're just being kind. They're just doing it because they feel sorry for me. Nobody actually wants to spend time with me. Didn't have many friends and stuff growing up. I didn't have confidence. I got picked on a wee bit, but nothing for being overweight, but nothing, you know, nothing to the point that would, that was really disastrous or anything like that. I just didn't have any confidence. I, I preferred staying in the house on my own. My mum had to force me out to go and meet people and to hang out with people and stuff. And I just didn't want to do anything. But, you know, when I did, <laughs> I enjoyed it so much. Um, and, yeah, I just gave myself a hard time about everything. Um, some of the thoughts that were going through my head, this isn't... It, it wasn't... These, these anxiety and low self-esteem issues didn't get addressed until I started going to my psychiatrist about uh, depression um, and that's that's been so it's been years and years but as I said nobody was talking about it then nobody nobody knew about it my, my folks my family and what you don't understand if you've never been through this before is when you're going through mental health problems you become the best actor in the world you put on you put on such a brave face for the people you're closest to your friends and family because you don't want them to know what's going through your head you don't want them to in your head you're thinking you know people have got their own problems you don't want to deal with mine and stuff like that and that again it's just completely inaccurate never forget the look on my mom and dad's face when I told them everything I was going through if I could just go back to the beginning and be up front and straight with them from the start <clears throat> it would have been the best move I ever made leaving it so long and not telling them I felt horrible I felt terrible about it I would I would urge anybody if you're having mental health problems like speak to somebody speak to the people that are closest to you it'll make a world of difference I promise you a hundred percent it will I, I couldn't push anybody to do that more you know if I had a broken leg or something I'd go straight to mom and dad and tell them because I've I broke my leg, oh, what an idiot, da, 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 stuff like that, and we joke about it and things, but with mental health, it's just completely different for some reason. There was, still is to a certain extent, but especially then, there was so much stigma attached to it, and people weren't talking about it, so I just say, speak to your friends, you know. Uh, as I said, I've went through, I've missed out on so many amazing opportunities because I didn't address these mental health problems, this low self-esteem and anxiety. My psychiatrist asked me to make a list of accomplishments that, I'd, I'd had over the years and all I could do was put negative stuff beside them you know I'd, I'd have kept this as well playing for the school football team there wasn't any competition for places left school with three hires it wasn't good enough for university I got an HND in college it's not a degree um, competed in a tie boxing fight wins against lesser fighters which is stupid because Phones for you, promoted to store manager at 21. I got loads of help. It didn't last long. Wasn't good enough. Top salesperson in my last job for several months. I got loads of help from other people. There was easy deals on the table. Anyone could have done that. House owner, help from my parents. Anyone can do what I've done. You know, uh, not good enough to do any further. I got lucky. Uh, I'll never achieve what I want. Just <clears throat> stupid not stupid because it felt like it was accurate at the time, but wholly inaccurate looking back on it now, these thoughts and feelings that I had on how I viewed myself, you know, if, if that if that was if that was one of my friends having those problems and I heard them talking to themselves about them like that, you know, I'd, I'd say, to, what are you talking about? That couldn't be further from the truth. But when it's yourself, you know, if you saw somebody talking to another person the way you're talking to yourself, you'd go over and say, here, what do you think you're doing? get a grip it's, that's not true at all but when you're doing it to yourself it just seems like it's it just seems so real at the time um feels like there's no way out and there is a way out i can guarantee you i'm, I'm proof I'm, a, I'm just a normal person with ye years years and years of anxiety and low self-esteem which are gone now you know i feel like a completely new person two or three years of clinical depression feeling like Felt suicidal. I didn't feel like I was at the point where I'd either like ever commit suicide, but I did feel like I did think about how I would do it. Planned just walking out into the sea down at the beach and never coming back. <laughs> the people, I know, I know, I never would have went through it, but the people I would have hurt if I did do it. I mean, and looking back on it now, if I had done it. I, 
everything that I've had to live for and that you've got to live for. If you're going through this just now, there is, you'll have people around you and if you, if you don't feel like you do, go to a psychiatrist, talk to them, get your feelings out there, I promise you, promise you it helps. I'm living proof it does, honestly. It's, I want to share some of my thought records as well that we wrote down. And uh, <clears throat> some of the stuff I was saying to myself at the time, you know. Um, this was on Boxing Day in the 27th, quiet days where I'm usually relaxing and enjoying myself, just completely depressed and down and the mood was about 70 out of 100 in terms of depression levels. Um, I cancelled going on nights out. I was looking forward to because people, I didn't think people wanted to see me. Um, I can't be bothered going out. What's the point in leaving the flat? Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see some other ones here. These are roughly the same. Uh, a reply I put to a comment on Facebook. I'm worried. Was my reply too quick? Did I say the wrong thing? I'm stupid. Why did I say this? It's like, wholly inaccurate. Out with friends in a bar. Uncomfortable, nervous, paranoid. How do I look? People are watching me. I don't have any conversation. I'll start sweating. What if a girl looks at me or tries to speak to me? I can't make conversation with them. And I was focusing on the negative, just doubting myself. Um, getting the silly stuff, like getting pictures developed and I got stuck at a machine. I got panicked massively because I looked stupid being stuck at a photograph machine. Uh, going, on, <clears throat> going on a trip with my mates... <clears throat> Me and my mates used to go down to Newcastle for nights out and uh, had amazing nights out. But for me, they were just, had fun, but I, I could never enjoy them the way I wanted to unless I got absolutely hammered drunk because <clears throat> then I'd forget all my feelings and stuff. We're in bar, friends started speaking to girls in a bar. Why can't I start talking to somebody? They're much better looking than I am. I won't have a chance with them. Uh, still in the club few of my friends are still talking to girls and I had to leave because I got scared, I got panicked, I got depressed, I got low. <clears throat> At a festival, um, I've not drank much and the music's on, I feel like I have to dance. I can't dance, I look stupid, people will laugh, everyone will be talking about me. And listen, I can't dance <laughs> and I'm never going to be a good dancer but I couldn't give a shit anymore. It genuinely doesn't bother me. I have fun and that's it. Um, I noticed I'm putting on weight, losing muscle. If nobody liked me before, they definitely won't like me now. Nobody will want to go out with me. I've got nothing to offer. I couldn't meet anyone when I was in shape. How am I going to meet anyone now? Um, woke up, looked at Facebook and Snapchat, noticing everyone's in a relationship. Low, depressed, fed up. I'll never meet anyone. I've never had a partner. Nobody wants me. Like, like I said before, these are just... <clears throat> these were just completely inaccurate opinions of myself when I was having challenges with my my my, my job um, I was looking for a new job and my depression was really bad um, I was looking for a new job I was going for interviews I wasn't getting the jobs and I'd come back from the interviews and I, like I, I'd, I'd punch myself in the face I'd, I'd hit myself because I, I wasn't good enough like you're never going to get these jobs. You know, you've messed it up again. You've blown it again. Negative, negative thinking. And again, just wholly inaccurate. I didn't get these jobs at the time because that wasn't the right path. I was destined to start my own business, my own shop, which, you know, I've done. And I'm a completely different person now. And you can be a completely different person. You will be. Trust me, when I was going through my darkest of days... Didn't feel like there was any way out. Didn't feel like there was any result. It felt like that was just the way I was, you know. Completely wrong. Completely wrong. If I'm ever going to say anything on this video, it's that the thoughts that you're having now, anxiety, low self-esteem, depression, it's an illness. They're wrong. That They're not a true representation of who you are as a person. Being able to change your mindset will change the way you feel about yourself. <clears throat> and the best way to do that is talking about it. I feel... 2020, you know, all my issues I've had when I was a kid and teenager and I don't care what people think of me. Obviously, I do to a certain extent, you know, I like my friends and stuff like that. But to the way I spoke about myself before was just completely different to the way I speak about myself now. And at the time, I couldn't see a way out at all. 
But being able to go through this cognitive behavioural therapy, um, my, my psychiatrist Fiona Simpson, she was fantastic. She was absolutely brilliant. She she got me through this along with, you know, the love and support of my friends, my family, my manager at the time, who again is now my my dear friend. And you know, without the without talking to these people, I wouldn't have got through it. Nothing would have changed. And um, if I just urge anybody, I swear, I promise you, talk to somebody. You will feel better for it. You will be able to change how you're feeling. I'm like I said, I'm living proof. I'm not. I'm not being paid by anyone to say this. I'm. I'm not. I'm not some famous celebrity. I'm not. You know, any. I'm just a normal person. And I had years of anxiety and low self-esteem and through talking to other people, I was able to turn it around. These negative thoughts I had about myself are gone now. I, they're, they're gone. That illness is gone. I'm, I don't feel depressed anymore. I addressed the issues and I got through it. You can get through it. I don't have suicidal thoughts anymore. <clears throat> I don't speak bad about myself. You know, I, I love myself. I love my, my, my body, my personality. You know, everything that I hated about myself before, I love about myself now, not in a cocky or arrogant way, but everything I've accomplished through my shop, I could never have done that in my previous mindset. And to think, if somebody had said to me 10 years ago, this is where you're going to be now, I would have said, nonsense, nonsense. Like, can't happen. Me, I'd, you know, I, I couldn't do anything like that, but I have, I've transformed myself around. And I'm not doing this to big myself up, I'm doing this purely to show people that I'm just a normal person and I, I managed to change everything around and you can do it as well. The first step is addressing it, going to a psychiatrist, speaking to your friends and family. It's the first step, I promise you, I promise you, if you do that, you'll be on the journey to better health and a new life. You'll be able to transform yourself around. I promise you, 100%. This video's went on a wee bit longer than I thought it was. I thought it would just be a couple of minutes. Um, I, I hope somebody out there has got some kind of help from it. Like I said, I'm in 2020 and I'm the best version of myself, better version of myself than I could have ever imagined. And you can be as well. Um, please take care of yourself. Please don't do anything stupid. Please. I, I, can, I can guarantee 100% of people out there that if you do something in terms of suicide, self-harming, you'll be hurting not only yourself, but other people around you. There is help out there. There is people that care about you. Please, please don't do anything drastic. Take the steps to become, to, to recover, to become a new and improved version of yourself. And I mean it, life is good. Life is so good. When you get rid of all that negativity, all that illness, life is good. You have so much to live for. I swear, I mean it. Keep fighting, address the issues, speak to people, talk to people, and I promise you, good things are on the other side. Thank you for listening. I hope you all take care. Speak to you soon.